10 millimeter versus 44 magnum and today what i have is the hornady custom ammunition i really like hornady custom i feel like it's probably their best line of ammunition you know their critical defense is okay their critical duty is a little better their american gunner is questionable whether that's good at all but the hornady custom seems to be really, really good ammunition they seem to load it with a lot better quality control so what this is is the 44 magnum is the 240 grain xtp and the 10 millimeter is the 180 grain XTP. Now the 44 Magnum is rated at 1350 feet per second, the 10 millimeter at 1275 feet per second. So we'll see how close we get to actual rated velocity. Now with that 10 millimeter pistol, you know, I've actually tested this, this 10 millimeter round before and I'm retesting it today, but it's gonna be a little bit different test because I don't like to test the same ammunition in the exact same, you know, medium exact same barrel lengths and all that so it's gonna be a little bit different today now the issue issue i had was the glock pistol here it was using a stock 45 acp extractor at the time and i measured the the rim thickness of these 10 millimeter rounds and they're actually pretty pretty high um, on the scale of, of specifications for 10 millimeter thickness uh, of the rim rim thickness on 10 millimeters 0 0.055 something like that and in the 45 ACP 0 0.049 so we weren't getting a good grip on that on that rim that's probably why we had some malfunction issues but also the difference here is we're using the big game pack here this is my dangerous game or hunting ballistic pack we're covered by a thick layer of carpet and then three and a half inches of baloney and then half inch of medium density fiberboard so it's basically like two two uh, normal ballistic packs so we're going to see how 44 and 10 millimeter do against that. So as always, we're going to go through the chronograph and see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time. And then we're going to go through the juggernaut box, which contains one of these packs. And how that represents ballistics gel is that pack, even though it's about um, 4 inches, it represents about 12 inches of ballistics gel. And each water jug after that represents about 3 inches of gel. So we have a potential 30 inches of comparison to gel to penetrate through when we look at this medium here so let's get started with the test and see how 10 millimeter hornady custom compares to the 44 magnum hornady custom all right first up we have the 10 millimeter auto we'll see how close we get to that 1275 feet per second rate of velocity and see if the reliability improves a little bit it should so let's see what we get here Twelve seventy-eight. 1280. Oh, we are diving way high on this. Twelve seventy two. Twelve eighty seven. Twelve eighty. So definitely better reliability because in the last test it was a jam every shot. And we definitely got that 1275 feet per second. So very good, very close to rated velocity. So that's a good round for, for being what they say it's gonna be. Now let's see how that 44 Magnum compares. All right, 44 Magnum, we're rated at 1350 feet per second. Let's see what we actually get. 1284. 1273, 1221, 1227, 1253. So we definitely did not get rated velocity, but that's still pretty good performance overall. Now let's hit the ballistic box and see how these two compare to each other. All right, 10 millimeter. We'll see how this does to their big game ballistic pack. 's <laughs> impressive all right there is just baloney everywhere around here there's not a lot of this pack left there's a lot of it on the table there it's all just shredded to pieces so this did a lot of damage to this baloney pack and the fiber board all right so here's where we entered so we're definitely expanding as we enter that fiberboard 
And then as we hit the second fiber board, <laughs> that's a lot of what I would consider bone fragmentation of the first one going through the second one, which created a huge amount of damage to our first jug, just a massive amount of damage. Jug two, a little bit less damage. We're just going straight through. Don't see any marks out the back of three. And all I see in the front of three is a dent. So the bullet is in jug two, so that's gonna be about 18 inches comparison to ballistics gel. So not over penetration at all. And all I could find is the lead core. I don't know where the jacket is. I've searched both of those water jugs. I don't see anything in the box here. I don't see anything on the baloney packs or in the baloney top. So I have no idea where that jacket went to, to this bullet. So we definitely got jacket separation. Uh, so yeah, that had a lot of shallow damage. So let's see how that 44 Magnum compares. All right, 44 Magnum, dangerous big game ballistic pack. We'll see what we get here. That baloney pack hit me pretty hard right in the lower gut there. This is interesting. Um, this ballistic pack consisted of three 12 ounce packs of baloney and there's only one left, one. I don't know where the rest of it is. The most I can see is this right here. That's about it. So the rest of it is a vaporized somewhere. I don't know. There's a lot of this stuff going on. This is a lot of damage here. So in our first water jug, we have the fiber board. This looks pretty similar to what we saw with 10 millimeter. So we're definitely getting expansion within this baloney pack. And here's our first fiber board and here's our second one, entrance and exit. So equal amount of damage to this. Jug two, jug three. There's something in jug three, but there's a hole in jug four. There's a big dent in jug five, so that's gonna indicate about 24 inches, I, I believe, in comparison to the ballistics gel that it made an impact into. So what happened was the jacket shed and jug three, and then the core made it into jug four, but you know, a core of a 240 grain bolt is still a lot of lead. So pretty impressive with both of these. I'm gonna say that Obviously, the 44 is going to do a little bit better on something larger. However, I would say, judging from this test, if I had to shoot like a white-tailed deer or a pig or something like that, I think, honestly, the 10 millimeter would do just as well. Maybe even a little bit better. Uh, one more test. I know you guys like to see the 50-yard shots, so I'll throw a few at 50 yards and just see what kind of accuracy I can do with these particular rounds. All right, I put that tank sideways because that's roughly the same size as a deer body or a pig body. So this will give a more realistic representation of what it might look like trying to hit something that size at that range from 50 yards. So hunting scenario here, let's see what I can do with 10 millimeters. sure if I hit that or the metal under it. Out of ammo. I think I hit it, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's try that 44. All right, 44 Magnum. Now, if I had to be realistic about this, if I was going to try to take an animal, I'd be shooting single action. That's just what I would be doing. So I'm gonna do that. I think I hit above it. I'm 
think I hit below it. Yeah, I, could, I definitely pulled a few of those shots. I was breaking those shots a little bit before I should have. Uh, but you see when it did hit, it did hit with a lot of authority. A 10 millimeter seems like it was a little bit easier to hit if I if I did indeed hit it, I'm not 100% sure until I look back at the footage, but I would say both did pretty well. If I had to, if I had just had to come up with, I don't know, a, a recommendation for somebody that says, hey, what's the better whitetail or pig round? Right now, what is it? I would probably say 10 millimeter to be totally honest. Now, if you're talking something bigger, definitely 44 Magnum. So that's what you get today, 10 millimeter versus 44 Magnum our big dangerous game hunting scenario however you want to word it so as always comment share and like and thanks for watching